Hey friends, so in less than a month, I'm gonna be putting out my live performance and live looping with Ableton Live course. And so leading up to that release in early October, the next videos that I'm gonna be putting out are gonna be showing you some of the incredible features that Ableton Live has when it comes to live performance. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at how you can take advantage of Ableton Looper's secret superpower, and that's iterative looping. Let's check it out. <laughs> Okay, so what do I mean by iterative looping? Well, essentially when you play a loop, usually once you've looped the loop, that's what you get. So let's go ahead and make a loop. Right? So that would be, in most circumstances, when you have a looper, that would be what you're stuck with forever. That is gonna loop forever and your audience is gonna have to listen to that loop over and over and over and over again. But where iterative looping comes into play is the ability to instantly change some aspect of the loop right away. Now, Ableton Looper has an insanely awesome secret superpower, and that's that you can actually tap the feedback path. Now, before we get into the technical stuff, I just wanna show you how powerful this is. So on track three, this is essentially a bunch of effects that I've dropped into the feedback path of the looper. So let's go ahead and listen to that loop again. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you that I can actually instantly change my loop with effects, and it gets committed right away. Let me show you. So hopefully your mind's a little blown right now. Yeah, essentially what's happening is I am committing these effects to this loop instantly, okay? These effects are being written to this waveform right away. And what's so powerful about this is that when you're on stage and you need to entertain people quickly, you can do so. Now, something else that's interesting is that when Looper is in this mode, okay, it's in the overdub mode, I can also record more things to it. So let's say I screw up my loop beyond recognition, I can just add more stuff to it, check it out. recorded that. Maybe I want to phase that out. So not only can you overdub these effects instantly, but you can also add more to the loop, okay? So even if you screw your loop up beyond recognition, you still have all this control. Now, of course, this is super amazing for live performance, but this is also really great for sound design. If you just simply want to crank out some sound design, some really quick stuff with some effects, it's just as easy as once you got something you like in your looper, check this out, you can click on the looper's loop and drag it into a new area in Ableton. So both in arrangement view and in session view, I now have, look, I have my loop audio right here. It's just so unbelievably powerful. So let's go ahead and look at how you can set this thing up from scratch. So I'll go ahead and delete these two tracks and I'll go ahead and make them from scratch. So the first things first, I'm gonna make an audio track and put a looper in it. Now at the moment, the instrument that I have is living in this track right here. And it's, in case you're wondering, it's using my fun uh, random preset generators with my uh, FM voice and the space designer <laughs> preset. These are fun. Now this is going directly to the master, but you can send it to the looper by simply choosing audio two and then two audio because this is the track that has the looper in it. I could just rename this also to looper. And now you can see that it says looper there. And so all I have to do is turn this track to monitor in, meaning, meaning that it's listening for anything that's coming into its input. And now we have the audio coming in there. Okay, now, this is where most people stop with the looper. You've got the looper set up, you've got the audio going into it, great. But what we wanna do is something better, and that's adding the effect insert. So I'm gonna make a new audio track, and this time I'm gonna choose audio from the looper. And then you'll notice that when I choose the track that has the looper in it, 
this new option appears, insert looper. Amazing. And so now I'll go to my audio two and I'm gonna go back to the looper and choose the insert. So essentially what I've done is I've tapped the insert of the looper. And so what's happening is the audio is going out of the looper into the insert and then back into the input of the looper, okay? So let's go ahead and make sure that the monitor is set to end because we want this track to be listening all the time for audio that's coming into it. So then we'll set up my MIDI controller to record a loop and that's as simple as hitting MIDI and then we're gonna do the, uh, the multi-purpose transport button with just one button. Something that I really like about Ableton's looper is this multi-purpose transport button being able to pretty much do anything that you'd wanna do with a loop. So now we'll go ahead and record a loop. Okay, so something to understand about Ableton's Looper is that you can seamlessly switch between overdub mode and play mode by hitting the multi-purpose transport button, right? So now I'm in play mode. Now, check this out. So what I've just done is I've turned off or I've turned down the effect loop in this loop, right? You can't hear it. When I turn this back up, the loop is intact, okay? now. Something else happens though, when I put it on overdub mode, all of a sudden this whole looper insert becomes active when it's recording, okay? It's recording whatever I do, so check this out. I'll switch it back over to overdub mode, and then if I pull it down, turn it back up, the first half of the loop is gone, okay? So the takeaway here is that essentially anything I do when the looper is in overdub mode will get recorded instantly, right? So including turning the volume down. Now, of course, just changing volume isn't that much fun. Let's go ahead and add some effects into this effect loop. So I just racked up the effects that I already had in here, but you can add any effects that you want in here so long as you're paying attention to the latency. This is something I go over in the live performance course constantly, but essentially some plugins and some devices in Ableton create device latency. And of course, you don't want devices that create latency because if you do, your loop's gonna get off time, okay? So notice that the auto filters, they have zero latency. So all you gotta do to do this is hover over the title bar of any of these and you can see they all have zero samples of latency. All right, so essentially, now we're set up to do some effect processing to our loop. So I'll go back to the looper and again, I'll record another loop. So looking at our effects, now we can start committing stuff. Awesome. Now maybe I wanna add some more notes to this. Maybe I want to add a reverb wash. Reinforce the part. Awesome. Well, hopefully you can see how amazing and powerful the Looper insert is, both for live performance and for studio sound design. I've been using this feature on stage for the last couple years, and it's really changed the way that I think about looping in general. And yeah, that said, I've been using Ableton on stage for over 15 years, and in that time I've learned how to navigate pretty much every conceivable roadblock when it comes to accomplishing any task on stage, whether that be live effect processing, syncing with other musicians, live looping solutions, you name it, I have been there. And now, in less than a month, my live performance and live looping course is finally getting released. So again, if you wanna be notified when that goes live, you can sign up to this email list up here. And if you're from the future, as in after October 2022, you can learn more in that same link. Thanks again for watching, and as always, if you like this kind of thing, consider subbing and hitting the bell. I'll see you next time.